yesterday we talked much about the grace of God. Today we'll first uh, start with talking about the law of God. How important it is for us to obey God. Let me first tell you a story. A real story that is still happening now. I come across a bishop in a country in Africa. And in the process, you know, when we communicate with him and some and 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 one pastor and leader, I found that the bishop was telling lies. What happened was because in that country they have great poverty. Great poverty. Okay. And they tried to raise some money to help them. And I said, I said half of the money first. Because Western Union did not allow me to send the total amount. And after sending half a mile, and then a thought came to me that I should send the money to another pastor in that area. But this bishop became very, very angry. And he threatened me. <laughs> he said he will bring this person to tell the government about this pastor to accuse him. And he also threatened me that he will tell the other pastors that I did not send all the money to him. Later he told an evangelist to communicate with me and ask me to send the money to the evangelist instead of the pastor. And I put this evangelist and the other pastor together in a WhatsApp group to communicate. And I found that there were two lines. The bishop said the evangelist was a pastor while he was not a pastor. He was an evangelist? The even, you know, the, there's a bishop and there is a pastor. I want to send the money to the pastor. Yes. And then the bishop wants me to send the money to the evangelist. Yeah. But the bishop said the evangelist is a pastor. Okay. Sasa hapa ulikuwa na mwingilisi na bishop kasisi akasema mtumie huyo mwingilisi na kumbe huyo mwingilisi tena hapo mwingilisi alikuwa mchungaji. Hakuwa pastor. So the evangelist himself said I'm not a pastor. Mwingilisi akakataa akasema mimi si mchungaji. And the second thing is he said that the pastor only has an orphanage and has no church. Na akasema tu mchungaji Ana, yani, yatima, hana hana kanisa. So I asked the evangelist to visit his church to see if he has a church. And then he went there, he did this pastor does have a church too and an orphanage. Then akapata kwamba huyu mtu hana kanisa na pia hana tena mahali pa watoto makao ya watoto wa mayatimu. But the bishop still doesn't want me to send the money to this pastor. Na tena kasisi hataki atume hii pesa kwa mchungaji. I told him a number of times it's a biblical principle. Akamwambia hii ni kanuni ya Biblia. To have more than one person to handle the money. Kuwa na watu saidi ya mmoja kuhusika kwa pesa. Why did this bishop only want himself and the people 
person he appointed to handle the money Kwa nini huyu kasisi utunge sana? Kwa nini huyu kasisi anataka huyo ya huyu askofu anataka ya kwamba pesa ipewe mtu ambaye atasema patia huyu mapesa. And I said the pastor will not run away with the money he is a church he cannot run away. Yeye akasema kwamba eh, ule mtu anayepatia pesa hawezi kukimbia kwa sababu ni mshiriki. I'm telling you a real story. Anasema ukweli kabisa without saying the names. Hataki kutamka majina. Just to let you know that you probably know there are many dishonest pastors and Christians. Ili mpate kuelewa ya kwamba kuna wachungaji na makasisi wasioaminiki. Maaskofu ambao hawaaminiki. I know there are many honest pastors and bishops. Najua kuna wale ambao ni waaminifu wachungaji na pia maaskofu. But the first reason we should obey God, you know, is that God's love and the second is God sees our heart and our action. Chapo la kwanza ni kumpenda Mungu na Mungu pia anaona kila hisia na hatua tunazozifanya. No one can run away from God. Hakuna kwa sisi yeyote ulimwengu wote awezaye kukimbia Mungu. If a Christian or a pastor steals money, ikiwa muamini ama mchungaji ataiba pesa First, he, his relation to with, with God would have many problems. God will not bless him. Mungu And the second result, na, na pili, he can lose his salvation and go to hell. And also, if it's not so bad, God can still discipline and punish this person. Na pia Mungu anaweza kumwadhibu huyu mtu. Let me ask you. Nataka kuuliza swali. Do you dare to sin against God? Che, wewe unafurahia ama unatamani kutenda dhambi mbele za Mungu? God sees everything. Mungu anaona kila kitu cha siri. No one can run away. Hakuna mtu aweza kumkimbia Mungu. I hope we all respect God. Na mimi nyinyi mnamheshimu Mungu. And say that we cannot despise God. Na kusema kwamba hatuwezi kumdharau Mungu. Okay, now here I'm going to talk about the fruit, the necessary fruit of salvation. If we we have saved all Christians would have these fruits. Kwa hiyo nataka kusungusia matunda ya wokovu. I'm going to use an illustration of a house. Kwamo nitatumia mfano wa nyumba. You can draw a house. Weza kuchora nyumba. On top it says that God loves us all. Na kwa juu ya hiyo nyumba unaweza kuandika Mungu anatupenda sisi wote. Everything is in God's hand. Kila kitu kiko katika mikononi mwa Mungu. No one can run away from God. Hakuna mtu aweza kumkimbia Mungu. Can we run away from God? Tunaweza kumkimbia Mungu. And then on the right hand side, na upande wa mkono wa kulia, if we love and obey God, ikiwa utampenda na kumtii Mungu, God will bless us. Na Mungu atatubariki. And then at the bottom, if we serve God, and uh, sehemu nyingine ikiwa utamtumikia Mungu, we will be rewarded tutapata dawapo and on the left hand side na mkono wa kushoto if we don't love God and don't obey God ikiwa hatutampenda Mungu na kumtii Mungu we will reap destruction tuta uh, uh, tuta ridhi ama tutavuna eh, mavuno ya mateso and if we don't serve God na ikiwa hatutamtumikia Mungu we will also reap destruction pia tuta uh, tuta uh, tutavuna tuta so basically on the right hand side, if we love God, we we'll obey God and serve God, we'll have blessings. And then on the left side, if we don't love God, don't obey God and don't serve God, there will be destruction. Okay, I'll go through each point and I'll give you Bible verses. 
Kwa hivyo tutaendelea katika mpangilio hii ya kufunza na nitawapatia vipengele katika Biblia. So you can apply to yourself and you can use it for teaching. Uh, ili upate kuzisoma, kuzinakili na pia unaweza kuzitumia wakati wa kufundisha. Now all the teachings in these few days I hope you first remember and second you learn to apply it in your teaching. Eh, katika haya mafundisho inatakana na kiti cha kwanza utakuwa unakuwa na ile kumbukumbu na pia ukiwa na ile kumbukumbu utatumia kwa njia ya kufundisha. This are teachings not just for one time but is a lifetime teaching. Haya mafundisho yatakuwa tu ya leo peke yake mafundisho wakati unapokuwa hai uyatumie kufundisha. For instance about living in the love of God is a lifetime practice. Eh, kama vile kuishi maisha ambayo ya kumpenda Mungu ni maisha ambayo ni maisha yanaitwa maisha ya milele. And then to obey God is also a lifetime practice. <laughs> Pia kumtii Mungu ni maisha ya milele. That we love God and honor God and respect God is also a lifetime practice. Because God is so good, I don't want to lose any blessings from Him. And God is almighty, I dare not offend Him at all. Okay, now the first point. God loves us all and everything is in God's hand no one can run away from him. Okay. Everything is in God's hand. No one can run away. First, it's Psalm 24 verse 1. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it. Ardhi ya Mungu na kila kitu kilichopo katika ardhi ni cha Mungu. Okay, now every time I say Bible words you say it twice so that it okay. time to write down Psalm 24:1. Kwa hiyo eh Saburi 24 mstari wa kwanza. And then Revelation chapter 2 verse 23 ufunuo mlango wa pili mstari chapter 2 Verse 2.23 Okay So first is In the last verse it says The earth and everything belongs to the Lord He can bless us in every single way And who is able to bring us to the Lord And then Revelation 2.23 Na ufunuo mbili 23 God said that I am he who searches hearts and minds and I will repay each of you according to your deeds. Mimi ni Mungu ninaye ninaye kujua vizuri ninaye angalia hisia na mawazo yako na kila kitu ninakifahamu kuhusu. Now right now it looks like nobody knows your hearts. Hivi tulivyo hakuna mtu anajua moyo wa mmoja wetu. Some of you come here, you really have a heart, yes, I want to follow God. But some of you came here, maybe you say, well, uh, uh, maybe some of them, the things I will follow, some of them I don't. And I want to say God sees our hearts. And what kind of pastor or leader or Christian we are, God knows. Right now it looks like there's a roof above us. Kwa hiyo hivi sasa mnapoangalia tuko na paya nyumba juu yetu. But one day on the day of judgment, lakini siku ya hukumu, that Paul said he's like a, a show to all the people in the world and all the angels. His life will be like a show to all the angels and the people. Kwa hivyo anasema kwamba Paulo anasema kwamba eh yeye ni barua ya kusomwa Na siku ya mwisho kila mtu atamuona vile alivyo maisha yake. That means everything we do 
will be exposed to God and everyone and all the angels. And then God will reward us according to what we do. Na Mungu atatubariki kulingana ama utapata shahada yako kulingana na vile ulivyokuwa ukifanya. But many people when they read this Bible passage, kuna wengine wetu tunapofikia vipengele vingine vya Biblia, they will say, well, this new time I'll obey God later. Anasema kwamba nina nafasi nyingine kwa hivyo naweza fanya dhambi na baadaye nitatubu. Or they will say, well, I have obeyed God in some way. It's just some other ways I don't obey God. Many people have excuses why they don't obey all the law of God. But we need to know that God knows our heart and He searches our hearts. Natakana tujia kwamba Mungu anachua mioyo yetu na Mungu yule anachunguza nani ya mioyo yetu. And then Galatians chapter 6 verse 7 to 8. Wa Galatia chapter 6 verse 7 to 8. Mlango wa sita mstari wa saba kwa nane. Wa Galatia mstari wa mlango wa sita mstari wa saba na nane. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked or God cannot be despised for Whatever a man sows that he will also reap. Usidanganyike kwa sababu yani usifanye mzaa mbele za Mungu. Mungu hadiwakiwi kwa sababu Mungu anajua kila kitu ambacho unafanya. So it says here do, do not deceive yourself do not cheat yourself. Usidanganyishe wewe mwenyewe. Everything whatever we do we will reap the result. Kila kitu unachofanya sirini kama ni usinzi kahaba wisi and, and we cannot despise God na hatuwezi yani kundarao Mungu let me ask you can you despise the government je nataka kukuuliza unaweza kuindarao serikali ya Kenya can you despise the courts unaweza kudarao nini mahakama if you despise the court what will happen ukidarao mahakama nini kitafanyika ukiwa tu ndani We can be arrested or put in jail. Utashikwa na uwekwe gerezani. How about we despise God? Je, inakuwaje tunapomdharau Mungu? God is almighty. Mungu ni mkuu. No one can run away from him. Kuna aweza kukimbia kwa mbali na Mungu. Can the chicken run away from you? Your chicken can the chicken we are going inaweza kukimbia kutoka karibu na wewe? At night they all come back, right? Itaenda na itarudi. Chicken cannot run away from you. Kuki yako haiwezi kukimbia ikaenda mbali na wewe. And we cannot run away from God. Sisi hatuwezi kukimbia tuwe mbali na Mungu. And if we sow to the flesh we will reap destruction. Ah tumeona ya kwanza unapokimbia kutoka kwa Mungu unaridhi uharibifu. If we follow our sinful nature we will reap destruction the whole life. Ikiwa tutaendelea kutumia hali yetu ya kimwili ya kwamba Mungu haangalii haangalii matendo yako anaangalia roho wewe utaendelea kurithi destruction to our spiritual life to our family to our church life to our ministry kutakuwa na ule uharibifu katika mwelekeo wa kiroho katika jamii zetu na katika hata majirani For instance, I talk about how we talk with people the Bible, the Bible says speak the words of truth with love Ah vile anavyosema vile kuongea na na wenzetu tusungumze ukweli kwa ajili ya Bwana. If we don't speak with love we will be also destroy our relationship with people. At kama tuwezi kusungumza upendo pia tutakuwa tunaweka uhusiano mbaya na wenzetu. So I hope we all remember we cannot run away from God. Kwa hivyo kila mmoja wetu apate kukumbuka hatuwezi kukimbia mali na Mungu. Let me say this share with this with you about myself. Nataka anataka shiriki nani kuhusu maisha yake. If there is a chance like in paying tax or other things, if I think I owe the government some money, I'll make sure I pay it back. Eh kama hii ni kama malipo ya kodi, ikiwa nina deni lolote la serikali nahitaji nilipe. Even sometimes the government doesn't know I've certain income. 
Hata kuna sehemu nyingine serikali haijui mapato yako. I still report it. I will still report it to the government. Okay. E, uh, anahitaji kupeana na kili ya uh, vitu zake faida ama mapato anayopata. Because if the government doesn't know it, God knows it. Kwa sababu hata unapofanya ile biashara ukijificha lakini Mungu naye anajua unafanya biashara lipa kodi ya serikali. And if God knows that I cheat and took some money that don't belong to me. Na kama Mungu atajua anasema uongo na anachukua pesa ambayo sio ya sehemu yake. I can reap destruction. Atarithi uharibifu. And I share with many people. Na anashiriki pia na watu wengi. We are all building on the foundation of Jesus Christ ambao wamejenga misingi yao kwa kwa Kristo Yesu. Whatever we do for God will be built on this foundation. Ili tunapojenga msingi wetu tutajenga huu msingi kwa msingi wa Kristo Yesu. But whenever we sin or when we have negative emotions of thinking, we are tearing down what we are building. Lakini tunapofanya hali ya madhara ama hali ya dhambi tunaharibu ule uhusiano wetu ama ule msingi pamoja na Mungu. Have you seen a person who tried to build a wall and he builds it and then he tear it down the next day? Naweza ushaona mtu anajenga jengo lake ukuta, akijenga jengo ukuta leo tena kesho ana anaingo anaiharibu anaipomoa. Do people do that? They build up and they tear it down. Watu jengo wanajenga hivyo tena wana wanaangusha. But when people serve God or when they do the responsibility given by God, and at the same time they greed for money or they have anger or they hurt people, na uh, tena wana ile haja sana yani ulazi wa pesa na asira. They are tearing down what they are building wana 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 ribu ile vitu vizuri ambavyo wamevitengeneza some people who have served god put a lot of energy into serving god oh watu wengi wanaomtumikia mungu wameweka nguvu nyingi kwa kumtumikia mungu but they do something not biblical na wanafanya vitu zingine ambavyo sio kibiblia for instance they steal people from other churches wanaiba watu kutoka kwa makanisa mengine or they lied ama wanadanganya or they stole money ama wanaiba pesa oh i need some money i took some offering money to help myself kwa hiyo wanachukua pesa zile za sadaka wanataka kujisaidia when we do that we are tearing down what we are building uh, tukifanya hivyo tuna tuna jenga uharibifu kwa ile tunajenga and the first result is what we can, what we serve God what we do for to serve God can be in vain all wasted kwa hivyo vyote ambavyo tutakuwa tunamtumikia Mungu vitakuwa sasa ni hasara kwa sisi. Second we can be disciplined and punished by God. Ya pili tunaweza kuadhibiwa na uh, kupata madha uh, kuadhibiwa na Mungu. And the worst is these people can lose salvation and go to hell. Na hao watu unaweza kukosa ama unaweza kuanguka katika wokovu na usiweze kuingia katika ufalme. Jesus has said in Matthew 7:21 to 23 there are many people who said they serve God. Matayo 7:20 na na moja na 22 kuna wengi wanaomtumikia Mungu that they have preach and they have drive out demons and they have perform miracles. Na wapendo wameupili, hao wapendo wamefukuza mapepo. But Jesus said I don't know you. Yes, watasema sikujui. So, do we have this fear of God, honor of God? Je, tuna hii hofu ya Bwana? I cannot run away. I cannot run away from God. Tuwezi kukimbia kutoka kwa Mungu. Okay? Now the second point. Kipengele cha pili. When we love God and obey God, we'll be blessed. Tunapo Matthew 6:33. Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all the sins will be added to you. Tafteli kwanza ufalme wa bimuni na haki yake na hivi tuviote vita wafata. To seek God's kingdom has two meanings. Kutafuta ufalme wa Mungu una nini mbili? First, we want to bring more people to believe in Jesus and enter the kingdom of God. Yeah. Kwanza ni kuwaleta watu wengi katika ufalme wa Mungu. 
And secondly, we want to let God be the king in our hearts. That is his kingdom. Wherever God rules, that is his kingdom. So in our heart we say, yes Lord, when you say it, I'll obey you. And also in our family, yes, I want to obey God in the family, to have love in our family. And then also when we serve God, yes, we want to do it in a way to let you be the king and not me, the pastor, be the king. Okay. Then we are letting him be the kingdom. Then we are seeking his kingdom. And seek his no here. No, 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 no. So don't go too far. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and seek his righteousness means to obey all his commandments. And all these things will be added to us. When we really want God to be the king, he will bless us in every way. And then Kenya will be blessed because of you also. There will be more Christians who really let God be the king. Kenya will be blessed. Do you believe that? In 2 Chronicles 7.14 There it says, says in my people will come to God with humility and pray and seek my face and turn away from the wicked ways. Then I will hear the prayer, I will forgive the sins, I will heal the land. The more the Christians follow God and love God, the more God will bless the place. And then Psalm 34 verse 10. Zaburi okay. mustari wa The lions may grow weak and hungry, but those who seek the Lord, Lord lack no good thing. Simba anaweza kuchoka na kukwisha nguvu lakini wale wanamtafuta Mungu wataendelea kupokea nguvu So even lions will get hungry Hata pia simba huwa na njaa huwa na njaa But those who seek the Lord will lack no good thing Na wale wanamtafuta Mungu watapata vitu vizuri And then Genesis 39 verse 2 Mwanzo 39 32 This is about Joseph He na usi Yusufu he was betrayed by his brothers. Yeah, yeah. Now imagine you were betrayed by your family members and sold to another place. Many people would have anger when we went to Tuna and complain to God, why didn't you save me? But Joseph, when he was taken to Egypt, instead of complaining, he has a good relationship with God. He must have handled his negative emotions. I'm sure Joseph would have some anger and some fear when that happened to him. But very soon he has a good relationship with God again. And then it says here in Genesis 39 2, the Lord was with Joseph so that he prospered. So when Joseph was taken to Egypt, 
Instead of complaining to God, he had a good relationship with God, and then the Lord was with him, and he prospered in everything he did. Kwa hivyo Yusufu alipohuswa kule Misri, hakuwa na ile asira, bali aliendelea kumpenda Mungu, na tunapotazama aliweza kubarikiwa na akawa mbarikiwa kule. So Joseph is a good example for us that he suffered but then he did not give up and he did not complain. Kwa hivyo Yusufu ni mfano mzuri kwa sisi kwa sababu aliteseka lakini hakulipisa kisasi. And then John chapter 15 verse 5. Eh Yohana 15 mstari wa 5. Yohana 15 mstari wa 5. Jesus said, I'm the vine and you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Because apart from me, you can do nothing. Okay. Okay, yes. So if we if we have a good relationship with Jesus and stays in him and he'll stay in us and then we'll bear much fruit. Kwa hivyo tunapokuwa na uhusiano mzuri na Yesu Kristo atakuwa pamoja nasi na ataishi na sisi. So the better the relationship with him the better the more fruit we have. Kwa hivyo ule uhusiano mzuri na Kristo Yesu Huo uhusiano mzuri pia tena tutapokea vizuri kutoka kwa Kristo Yesu. Fruits came from God. Fruits came from God. Matunda mazuri yatokayo kwa Mungu. Because apart from God we can do nothing. Ah uh, pasipo na Mungu hatuwezi kufanya chochote. So whenever we serve God we always love God and obey him. Kwa hivyo kila wakati tunapomtumikia Mungu tumpende Mungu na tumtii. Every day enjoy God. Kila siku ufraia Mungu. And be strengthened by God. Na upokee nguvu kutoka kwa Mungu. And have the words of wisdom from God. Na upate neno la hekima kutoka kwa Mungu. Let me tell you, this teachings of mine are from God. Nataka kukuambia haya mafundisho yanatoka kwa Mungu. That God help me handle my daily problems. Mungu amemsaidia ili kushawishi kusuluhisha mambo yake ya kila siku. All my teachings I practice, I put it in action. And I found that God works and God helped me how to put this teachings in action. Haya mafundisho nayofundisha ninayoweka katika mazoezi na Mungu ananisaidia kuwa katika ile mazoezi na kufurahia. Okay, the next point now, when we serve God, we will be rewarded. Kwa hivyo lengine tutakapomtumikia Mungu tutapata thawabu. Okay? In Mark chapter 9:41. Mark chapter 9 verse 41. Marco mlango wa 9 mstari wa 40 wa 39 ah wa Truly I tell you anyone who gives you a cup of water in my name because you belong to the Messiah will certainly not lose a reward eh ya kwamba yoyote atakaye kupatia kikombe cha maji so it says here that if someone gives a Christian a cup of cold water, that he will not lose reward. So Jesus encouraged us that not only when we do great things for God, even when we do a little thing, God will remember and reward us. So it's good that some of you go home and then thank your wife for cooking for you. Uh, okay. You know, you know, God remembers everything we do for Him and He rewards us. He's a wonderful God. Do you remember every good thing you have done? 
Je, unakumbuka mambo yoyote mazuri ambayo umefanya kwa ajili ya Mungu? Sometimes you might, you might forget. Sasa zingine unaweza sahau. But God doesn't forget. Lakini Mungu hasahau. And he remembers every good thing we do and any reward us if we have a pure heart to love God and love people. Kwa hivyo Mungu anakumbuka vitu vizuri kama noma no fukanga, no no byanzi, ulio msimamo dia ni kuru byanzi, badala ya usinye kana ndo ugonda kwa manchi. Nikalo ufuko usuma kubwa na anaisho kulio mwe kwereshe, Mungu atakuriwat. But if people have an impure heart or have they have sins, they can lose the reward. Lakini naoba na ufuka kwa usuma kulia ndo mwe mubi na usinyishe, ne nyasai hanya ni kwese ya hano ufuki shita. So we repent of all our sins and serve God with a pure heart to bless people. Kwa hewe natakana upate kutubu ili Mungu apate kutubariki. And then we won't lose the reward. Na kila mtu ili apate kupokea sawadia. Isn't that beautiful? Isiyo ni vizuri? Yes. And then in Matthew 25 there are three parables about the end time. Matayo 25 kuna nini tatu? The three parables, the first one is about the ten virgins. Five are foolish and five are wise virgins. Kuna msema ambayo ni ya wanarusi watano. Wanarusi. And then the wise virgins and the oil, this represent the Holy Spirit or the salvation or the presence of God. Na pia inasumuzia wale waliokuwa na ikima mama majusi. Okay, and then the second parable is about three servants, one with five talents, one with two talents, and one with one talents. Na wengine ni kuhusu talanda ambazo wengine walipewa moja, wengine tano, na wengine mungine kumi. And then the two servants with the five and two talents came and earned the money back. Na wale walipewa talanda ya tano na talanda ya pili waliweza kuongezea ile pesa zao na wakarudisha. And then Jesus said, Yesu akasema, In Matthew 25:23, Matthew 25:23, Matthew 25:23, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and shh. Enjoy your master's happiness. Yesu akawarudishia shukrani asante sana kwa kuongezea pesa zako zilikuwa tano ni kumi, zilikuwa kumi ni ishirini tena nitawaongezea ili mpate kuendelea mnashika kweli So God will remember and he will say good and faithful servants Na Yesu Mungu atasema asante sana mwaminifu na mtendakazi mzuri if we have the heart, we just want to bless people, we just want to help people, we want to follow God's will, then God will remember and bless you. And I told people, it's not hard to please God. Many people say, no, it's too hard to please God because his standard is too high. But from the Bible, what I saw is when we have sinned, when we are not doing well, we repent, God is very happy. And then when we pray to Him, we come close to Him, He will come close to us. Na tunapoomba tukienda tukimuomba na tuwe karibu naye sasa Mungu anakuja na kuwa karibu na wewe. And then when we love God then he will prepare for us what eyes can, cannot see have not seen and the ears have not heard and the hearts have not thought of. Na kwa hivyo tutamuomba Mungu na Mungu atatubariki kwa vitu zingine ambazo hata macho zetu ya haziwezi kuona. So the Bible says that you know whatever we do for God even the little thing we do, we really want to serve God and love God. God remembers. And please remember this. These are the things we have done for God. And these are the things we have not done. Now for people, they will look at what we have not done. 
Uh, because you will look at what we have done. Na kwa Mungu ataangalia vile vizuri ambavyo umefanya. Even the cup of power that you reward. Hata kikombe cha maji ambacho unampa mtu wa Mungu atakubariki. What we have not done we can ask God to forgive us. Ile ambayo hatujafanya tuende mbele za Bwana na tutubu ili apate kutusamehe. And he can give us strength to do more. Na anaweza kutupatia nguvu na ufahamu kufanya zaidi. But even the little things we do for God, God is very happy. Lakini kitu chochote kidogo tunachomfanyia Mungu atakutabasamu tu unapokea baraka. So do you agree that it's easy to please God? Je, unakubaliana na mimi ni rais sana kumpendeza Mungu? Yes. So every day you can say this. Eh kila siku unaweza sema hivi. When I pray to God, God is very happy. Ninapoomba kwa Mungu, Mungu anakuwa na furaha. God rejoices over me with singing. Mungu hufurahi anapoimba. Yesterday I talked about an interactive prayer. Remember? Whenever we pray, he is very happy. Whenever I serve him, I have someone, God is very happy. Then we can rejoice every day. But we should not be proud. Lakini usiwe na kiburi. If we are proud then we are tearing down what we have built up. If we are proud then we are tearing down what we have built up. Okay. Tuna tukiwa na kiburi tuna aribu yote ambayo tumetengeneza. But if we continue to serve God and love God and love people and say Lord I want to serve you I want to please you God is very Mtumikia Mungu na kunyenyekea na kuvunjika na kusema Mungu na kupenda na nataka nikutumikie Mungu anafurahia. So can we do this every day? Je, tunaweza fanya hivyo kila siku? God is happy with what I do. Oh, Mungu hapo na furaha na kila kitu nafanya. I can rejoice in the Lord. Naweza kufurahia ndani ya Bwana. God is happy with me. Mungu ananifurahia. And he bless me more and more. Na atanibariki tele tele. Can we do this? Now for many people, what we now if these are the blessings, now his and his baraka. These are the things we need blessings. His and your vitu zinataka baraka. Lot of times people look at the things they need more blessings. What we are going to do? We are going to take a sun. But people don't look at the blessings we have. What we are going to do? We are going to take a sun. The more we look at the Say God has blessed me in many ways. I have food to eat. I have a, a bed to sleep on. I my family and my church. I'm happy. Now, my family, my family, my family, my family. If we look at the blessings of God. We can be very happy, right? To be on the other side of the moon, to know is a cool and fresh and good thing to know that is it. And then the more we rejoice, the more we'll have to receive from the Lord. Amen. 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 Amen.
If all the people in the church are like that, they're joyful, people would like to come to your church. Can you see the difference? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, now we come to the last two parts of the house. If we don't love God and don't obey God, there will be destruction. Galatians 6 chapter, uh, chapter 6 verse 8 Whoever sows to please the first from the first will reap, will reap destruction Whoever sows to please the flesh okay. from the first will reap So when people follow the pride or their anger, or their frustration, they will reap destruction. When they sin, when they are angry, first they will suffer in the body. And then God won't be happy with them. And God, God will bless them. Yeah. And they can bring destruction in the whole life. In John 5.14. In John 5.14. Five there was a man who was sick for 38 years and he could not walk. And Jesus healed him. Jesus has a life in him. He can heal anyone. After Jesus healed him, he said, don't, you know, you're well again. Stop sinning or something worse will happen to you. So after he was healed, if he continues sin, he can get worse again. He can get worse in his body. He can get worse in his daily life. And he will lose the pleasure of God in his life. And then John chapter 15 verse 6. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. And branches are picked up, thrown into the fire and burned. So if a Christian doesn't pray, doesn't stay in Jesus, he will be like a branch dried up and he will be thrown into the fire. Is this fire heaven? Thrown into the fire, does it mean heaven? What does that mean? It means hell. So if someone doesn't pray, he can go into hell. Okay, and then the last part. He who does not serve God and does not bear fruit for God can face also, also face destruction. In Matthew 25, the three, the second and third parables, uh, in the second parable about the five, uh, three servants, there was one servant who buried his talents. Matthew 
Oh, kuna yule aliyefunikia talanta yake. In Matthew 25 verse 26. Amathai 25 mstari 26. He was called a wicked and lazy servant. Ndiitwa mtu mbele mtu mtenda kazi muovu na mtenda kazi muovu na mtu mwenye dhambi. And verse 30 throw that worthless servant na mstari wa 30 into the darkness. Na mstari wa 30 unasema kwamba mtupe nje ama mtoe nje. Now we are not saved by doing good. Hatu hokoki kwa kutenda mazuri. We are saved by trusting in Jesus as our savior. Na ukolewa kwa kumwamini Mungu kwa Bwana na mwokozi wa maisha yetu. When we are saved then we bear fruit. Eh tunapohokoka na tuzae matunda. But if Christians don't bear fruit and they don't serve God at all, then they are burying their talents. Na wakristo hatutumii talanta zetu na hatumtiki Mungu. Tunafunika zile talanda ambazo tumepewa. Na tutatupwa katika shimo la giza. Na kutakuwa kule na kulia na kusana meno. Is that heaven? Je, no. hiyo ni biuni? No. Okay. And then in the last parable, there are the sheep and the goats. Na katika nini ya mwisho? And the sheep are on the right hand side of God. Na, eh, 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 eh. And Jesus said, You have done all the sins to me. And then they said, When did we do it to you? And Jesus said, If you do it to one of my little ones, then you do it to me. And you go into eternal life. Na utaingia katika ufalme wa utele wa milele. And then the goats on the left hand side, they have not done these things to the little ones. Na zile kondoo ama wale watakatifu walio kuwa mkono wa kushoto hawako wamefanya haya. And they go into what? Hao wanaenda katika kuzimu. The Bible says eternal punishment. Wanasema ya kwamba kule kuzimu ni kuishi maisha ya mateso milele. So as pastors, we want to train the people to serve God. Kwa hivyo kama wachungaji tunahitaji kutayarisha watu waamini wamtumikie Mungu. Don't just tell people to come and listen to you. Usiambie tu waamini wakuja wakusikize, but train them to go out and bless other people. Eh wasaidie wafundishe kuenda na kubariki wengine. Now in this few days I will give you training of how to go out and do evangelism and bless people. Kwa hizi siku chache nitawafundisha jinsi ya kufanya uingilishi kufikia watu. But first we know that we have no choice after we are saved. We have no choice but to love God, obey God and serve God. Kwa kwanza unatakana ujue hatukuwa na uamuzi wote bali uamuzi wetu ni kumtumikia Mungu na kumpenda Mungu. But we don't serve God with an attitude and say, well God says I have to serve so I serve. Hatuwezi kumfanyia Mungu kwa hali ni kama ile ya kungangana. But we say everything I do for God God is very happy. Yeah, tu katika mioyo yetu tukitamka ya kwamba chochote tunachofanya Mungu anafurahi. And whatever I do for God God is very happy. Na chochote ninachofanyia Mungu Mungu anakuwa na furaha. But for people who never serve God at all they will be like this lazy servant thrown into the outer darkness. Watu ambao hamtumkii Mungu watakuwa tumishi ambao ni wavivu na hao watatupwa katika shimo la giza. So when you go to heaven, God doesn't just ask you, did you believe in Jesus? Utakapoenda mbinguni, hautaulizwa tu uliokoka ama ulimwamini Yesu kuwa Bwana na mwokozi wa maisha. God will ask us also, what have you done for me? Mungu atakuuliza je, Masai ulinifanyia nini? Everything we've done for God will be presented to God and tested with fire. Na chochote ambacho tunafanyia Mungu kitakuwa katika majaribu ya tanuri ya moto. And that is in 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Na iko katika waraka wa Korinto kwanza mlango wa 3. And those who have done for God with a pure heart will be like the gold and silver and precious stone. Wale ambao wanamtumikia Mungu kwa moyo wako wote kwa nguvu zako zote kwa akili yako yote eh, matokeo yako yatakuwa kama dhahabu. But that what we do with a wrong attitude would be like fire would be like pain wood and stubble. Lakini yale tunayofanya katika siri ukifanya usinifu ukifanya uongo uh, hayo yatakuwa kama kuni zile za kuhakisha kule kuzini okay. So from today we have seen a teaching that Everything that is in God 
katika mafundisho ya leo tupate kuelewa kwamba kila kitu ulichonacho kiko mikononi mwa nani no man can run away from him wezi ukamkimbia Mungu when we love God and obey him he will bless us tunapompenda Mungu na kumtii atatubariki when we serve him he will reward us tutakapomtumikia yeye atatubariki when we don't love him and don't obey him we will face destruction tusipompenda kumtii tutapokea uharibifu And then when we don't serve God we also face destruction. Na pia tusipomtumikia Mungu tutakuwa katika uharibifu. Okay, any any question? Swali lolote kutoka kwa ndugu au madada. So we all should say yes God remembers everything I do for him. Eh, sisi wote tunatakana tumwambia Mungu ndio Bwana kumbuka chochote ninachokufanyia. I want to love God and obey him and serve him. Nataka kumpenda Mungu nataka kumtii na pia kumtumikia. It can be any little thing we do for God. Chochote kidogo tunachofanyia Mungu. We pray for someone. Tunaombea mwenzetu. We greet someone, welcome someone. Na wasalimu ama tunakaribisha wenzetu. We encourage someone, tunamhimiza wenzetu. We strengthen someone's faith, tunamtumia nguvu ama tunainua imani ya wenzetu tunachochea. Or help the pastor of the church, ama tunasaidia mchungaji wa kanisa. Everything we do for God, God will remember and reward us. Chochote tunachomfanyia Mungu, Mungu atakumbuka na atatulipa. But for those who don't serve God at all, na kwa wale ambao hawamtumikii Mungu kwa njia yoyote, there could be something wrong with the faith. Eh basi kuna kitu kingine, yani unapungukiwa sehemu fulani katika imani yako. A person can lose salvation. Na mtu anaweza kupoteza ukovu wake. When not saved by doing good, Hatuokolewi kwa kufanya mazuri. We say by trusting in Jesus. Tunaokolewa kwa kumwamini Yesu. But when we are saved we always bear fruit. Na tunapokolewa kila siku tuzae matunda. Let me ask you. Nauliza swali. Do you have fruit to present to Jesus today? Je, una matunda ya kupeana mbele za Kristo Yesu leo? Do you have fruit from your heart? Yes Lord, I want to glorify you. Je, una ile matunda ya kumwambia Bwana nataka kukutukuza. And I hope you say yes Lord I want us to do more for you. Na naamini utasema ndio Bwana nataka nifanye makuu kukuhusu Mungu. I want to spend more time loving you so I must train. Nataka kuchukua wakati wangu mwingi nikikupenda wewe Mungu. And I want to obey you in every way and also to. Na nataka nikutii katika kila hali yoyote nitakayokuwa nikiishi. I want to obey you at home in the church and everywhere I go. Nataka kukutii katika kanisani na katika chochote ambacho utafanya na popote utakapoenda. So I hope you remember this important teaching in the Bible. Kwa hiyo naamini utakumbuka haya mafundisho ya muhimu katika Biblia. That you can bring to other people. Na pia unaweza kuombea wengine. Okay.